Welp, just watch the keynote at DubDub and I guess I'm not selling my iPad Pro. Let's ramble. Hold up, face go well when I pull up. They all on me like a one thing. Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. A couple of days ago, I did a little Apple event preview video with some last minute rumors, and I was venting about my frustrations about the M1 iPad Pro and how it's basically a grossly over spec machine powered by a subpar operating system. Things got a little bit heated and I pledged to sell my iPad Pro unless Apple announced some really serious Pro upgrades to iPad OS and I meant it. Having watched the keynote, I'm now happy to say that I will be hanging on to my M1 iPad Pro a bit longer. Cause Apple finally gave us some features we've all been waiting for ever since we watched Tim Cook smirk while he placed that M1 chip inside that iPad. But before we go over those awesome new features, let's first do a quick recap of the event for those of you who missed it or don't have the time to watch the whole thing. If I look tired today, that's because I am. I'm in Europe and it's pretty late over here. Pair that with newborn twins and that's why my bags have bags. Anyway, this event was actually pretty packed with announcements, starting with iOS 16, which will get much improved customization options. Now, customization is one of the selling points of Android phones and it looks like Apple is trying to find an answer to that by giving us more freedom to customize the iPhone. The lock screen customization options look pretty amazing and that depth effect looks dope. You can also add and customize a whole host of widgets to your home screen, which will be a very welcome feature to a lot of you guys as well. Notifications will now roll in from the bottom. I'm not yet sure how I feel about that. It might turn out to be better, but I'm used to swiping down, so it will take some time to get used to. Very interesting though is live activities, which gives you snippets of progress from within certain apps like scores in a sports game or the progress of your Uber driver. I love not having to go into an app to see the info I want, and this is a feature I really look forward to. Messages can now be edited and you can undo send. Plus, you can mark threads as unread. These features were already available in apps like Telegram, but it's nice to have it in messages as well. The dictation feature now lets you switch between voice and touch by keeping the keyboard open while you dictate, and that is actually a really useful addition because dictation is never perfect. It's such a hassle to switch between dictation and the keyboard just to make a few corrections. This makes that so much easier. Live text is now extended to video, so you can now literally go and grab a bit of text out of a video you're watching. The Apple Wallet got some useful updates as well. You can share keys with friends and family quite easily. And probably the most important one is tap to pay, which will make it super easy to make payments from one iPhone to another, which is also great for small businesses. Apple also announced Apple Pay Later, which lets you make your payments in installments. I'm not a big fan of that at all people have enough debt as is. Maps is getting new features. City experiences looks pretty nifty, but it does seem rather gimmicky. And to be totally honest, I never use Apple Maps. Google Maps is still much better in my opinion. Family sharing offers personalized access to various Apple subscription apps. And while that's a step in the right direction, what I would really like to see is the ability to have multiple user profiles on iPhones and iPads. The home app saw some improvements as well. Apple introduced Matter, which is the new standard that will make it easier to connect smart home devices. There is improved navigation within the home app and multi-camera view shows you multiple security cameras in a single view. Apple also presented a new generation of Apple CarPlay that looked pretty exciting. Most notably, the updated version of CarPlay will make use of all the available screens in the car rather than just the main one. The interface also adapts to whatever screen shape your car has. Unfortunately, this will only be available in future cars, so this is not a downloadable upgrade for existing CarPlay systems. One feature Apple completely glossed over is the addition of Quick Notes to the iPhone, which was surprising to me because that's a feature I personally really wanted. Very quickly, some updates in watchOS 9. There will be four new watch faces. The workout app will get new metrics, especially for running workouts. The sleep tracker looks like it will finally be able to compete with the, the likes of Fitbit. Sleep tracking on the Apple Watch has always been one of the main downsides of the watch for me. It was garbage, but it looks like we'll now be able to identify sleep stages much better using machine learning. And for someone who doesn't sleep enough like me, making sure that little sleep 
is of good quality is quite important. So I'm happy about this new upgrade. AFib history looks really great, which helps you identify when your heart was acting up and how many times it did that so you can get an early warning if something's wrong. When you're an old fart like me, this type of functionality starts to become very interesting. It also lets you track your meds, which is great if you're a scatterbrain, and it warns you against combining drugs that don't go together very well. Moving away from the operating systems, we had some very exciting hardware announcements as well. And I know a lot of you have been hoping for at least one of them, and that is the M2 MacBook Air, which has a complete redesign. Moving away from the wedge and looking more like an ultralight version of the MacBook Pro, including MagSafe charging, thinner bezels, and the notch. The Air will come with two Thunderbolt ports. The specs are pretty amazing for a MacBook Air. The maxed out version has eight core CPU, 10 core GPU, two terabytes of storage and 24 gigs of RAM. Coupled with the ability to play back multiple streams of 8K video and 18 hours of battery life and all of that in a fanless design, that's pretty impressive. The biggest surprise for me was the new 13 inch MacBook Pro. I did not expect Apple to bring this model back now that we have the 14 inch and since we now also have this very powerful MacBook Air. But here we are. Both of these MacBooks are to be considered the lower end MacBooks, but with these specs, I don't know if you can even say that anymore. Of course, we have a new Mac OS, which will be called Mac OS Ventura, and it will come with some interesting new features. For the purpose of this video, I will not go too deep into those. The features that jumped out at me were Stage Manager, which looks to be a much better way of organizing apps, improving focus. Stage Manager will place the app you're currently using at the center while moving your other open apps to the side which gives you a very nice overview of what's open and makes it very easy to switch between those apps. FaceTime gets a very cool feature whereby handoff kicks into gear whenever you get close to your Mac so you can continue your call on the bigger screen. And we'll now be able to use our iPhone cameras as a webcam for our Macs. And that is of course huge. I know a lot of people have been asking about that because those cameras are of course leaps better than the potato cameras in the MacBooks and the studio display. I'm almost wondering whether Apple purposely made those cameras suck so we would be more reliant on our iPhones. The most mind blowing feature though for me was desk view, which uses the ultra wide lens on your iPhone to make it look like you have an additional top down camera. That is truly amazing. Now, finally, onto the iPad Pro. Some small tidbits, weather is coming to the iPad, which I know has been a long requested feature, and we're getting some pretty cool collaboration features. You can now instantly start a collab from within apps like Messages, which looks pretty dope. Apple announced the Freeform app, which will be coming out later this year, and which looks like a super intuitive collaborative whiteboard that allows you to draw, clip, write, etc. Apple also promises a better gaming experience using Metal 3, which is also announced for Mac OS and which will supposedly rival PC gaming. We also heard Craig talk about desktop class apps, which means that a lot of features we love to use on the Mac are now coming to the iPad, and those include undo and redo across the system, availability view and calendar, find and replace, a real document menu within files, and customizable toolbars. The Files app is also getting some much requested updates, such as the ability to change file extensions, view folder sizes, expand folders and list view, sortable columns, and navigation buttons. Personally, I'm super excited about this new feature called Reference Mode, which turns the iPad Pro into a proper reference monitor, and that is hugely useful for me as a video editor. That alone makes this update worth it for me. It means I can color grade my videos and use the iPad to know exactly what the colors will look like in the final product. We're also getting virtual memory swap, which means the full 16 gigabytes can be made available to any app. Probably the coolest feature is that Apple is bringing Stage Manager to the iPad as well. Not only does it bring a much more intuitive way of multitasking, including resizable overlapping windows, it is also finally making use of the entire screen. No more of those hideous black bars, but multitasking on the full width of your external monitor. So guys, what do you think about iPad OS 16? Are you happy or are there still some features that you wish you had seen that aren't there? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these, subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.